All right, so we are live. Uh, some of you guys might be on the other one that I made because it wasn't. Uh, I still got to figure out how to schedule things like that. So let's see. Oh, we got one person in. couple people are in now. All right. So uh, I told you guys on, uh, if some of you guys were on Zoom, I told you that today we would be, I'd be going around feeding the animals. But unfortunately, um, like I was going to do that with my phone, but unfortunately I can't live stream from my phone because I don't have enough subscribers. Uh, it, like I checked into it and you you like have to have a thousand subscribers before YouTube will let you uh, broadcast from your phone. So we're stuck with the, the computer for now until I can figure out how, uh, maybe I'll just make like a quick little video one of these days of me feeding all the animals to show you guys how they're doing. I did bring Bonnie out for you guys to see though. Bonnie's just kind of gonna be chilling here. Uh, hey, Mineta wrote you a letter. Um, and so, yep, there's Bonnie, just kind of being Bonnie, just chilling. And so I'm not going to stop holding her awkwardly like this and just kind of let her chill on the table. But uh, so today, again, just any questions that you have. Uh, I don't really have a lot to talk about today. Uh, some things that I will discuss, uh, some frequently asked questions, probably a lot more so today than any other day this week uh, about the tests and quizzes and things like that. Uh, biology, you guys have already done them like this before where I sent you the link and you just had to click on the link. And seventh grade, you guys have done the quizzes before where I would send you the link and you just had to go to it. It's still pretty much the same principle, except now it goes through this uh, app that I have. It's like an add-on for Google Forms called Timeify Me. And a lot of you guys have been having problems with Timeify Me where I sent out that letter this morning saying that Timeify Me wasn't working and so you probably couldn't access your test. And I think because of that, a lot of you guys started going to the Timeify Me site and that website is not where you find your test. Your test is directly linked. I send a link directly to your email and that's how you access it. The Timeify Me website is just a, uh, it's a, it's a tool that's used with Google Classroom to give like a set time on things and to allow only certain uh, responses. And it lets me know, like I see on the test exactly when you start the test and exactly when you end the test. And so I know if you took your time on the test or if you just did the test in like five minutes, Christmas tree the whole thing. And so just because it's online, I still know that stuff. Uh, another thing on it is it even tracks, you know, are you staying focused on the test? I'm really not sure how it does that, but nonetheless, it will tell me, you know, so-and-so was focused the entire time or so-and-so was off focus for four different times. And so that just lets me know what's going on. Um, and uh, Okay, that's fine. You can turn your stuff in around five-ish. Again, like I said, um, if you were here the other day, I talked about how on RenWeb, you'll see that all your assignments say due Monday, and that's because you can turn them in on Monday. Uh, I know in the first letter I sent out, I said Saturday and then with Easter that changed last week and I'm just going to keep it at Monday every week from now on. That way it doesn't show you having assignments over the weekend and uh, that way you just have a full week from Monday each week. So uh, again, that's kind of so for like having assignments, things like that and grades. Some of you guys were asking about grades. Uh, the way I am doing the grading right now because we are working with so many different platforms for getting your information. Some of you guys are sending it through Remind, some of you are sending it through RenWeb, some of you are sending it to email. Uh, really quick, just another FYI, if you are sending it to my school email address, that school email address is so full with assignments right now that I can't reply to anything if you send it that way. So if you want me to reply to you, send it to my other email. 
that I have uh, given you guys in the past. And if you don't have that, just message me on Remind and I can get that to you. Uh, but how the grading is going, because there are so many different methods for you to turn in your work, and we've been really trying to push the uh, RenWeb Remind, or I'm sorry, the, the RenWeb Homework Dropbox, uh, I tell you guys that's where you need to be sending your work because that's the easiest way for us to access your work, and it's all there in one neat place. And so that's what I always grade first. And so I always go through RenWeb first, and those are the grades that go up first. The one that gets second priority is stuff you send me through Remind. Because even though Remind is kind of like text messages where I have to scroll through a bunch of messages to find your work, it's still organized in the sense that all your work is in that one uh, place. And so I have it all right there, and I can go through checking the list. And so I do Remind second. And then last but not least, I do the emails. And some of you guys are also wondering when like I'll put things in as missing or pending and you say, okay, I turned that back in. And then you notice that it still hasn't changed. That's because I haven't got back around to that class yet. Because uh, again, with uh, six different classes, I have to go through class by class. And so that's how the cycle is trying to go. It's like, I'll do all of RenWeb and Remind for my anatomy classes, all RenWeb Remind for my biology classes, all RenWeb Remind for my life science classes, then I'll do the emails, then I start the cycle over again. So again, if you've turned it in and you still haven't seen, or you see that it hasn't changed, don't worry, it's going to change. I just haven't got back to it in the cycle yet. And so again, priority-wise, putting stuff in RenWeb, that's going to get great at first, putting stuff in Remind, that's second, and then third is email. Uh, with that being said, we are still doing progress reports. And so those are actually going to be going out on Monday. And if I am missing work from you, that work will be going in as missing, which means it will be showing up as a zero. And for some of you, that might not be good for your grades. But the thing is, you know, just get the work turned into me and then that grade will change. And so that's another reason it's really important to stay up on top of your work is because of that. And so uh, progress reports will be coming out next week. And so you'll have an updated grade then. And uh, that includes the tests and quizzes that you guys took today. That's another reason that I uh, have been using Google Forms. It's something that I really wanted to do uh, really since the beginning of the year. But I haven't had the Google Classroom capabilities to do it. But I have since then found other ways to do it without having to access the Google Classroom. And so with using Google Forms for tests and quizzes, it automatically grades it unless it's a short answer question. Then I have to go back through and check those out. But that doesn't take as long as grading 50 questions on each test. And so you'll be getting your test questions back a lot sooner, a lot faster. You'll be getting that, uh, which will be this weekend. Now, you will not be able to see the test until I have everybody's test from that class turned in. So in other words, I might tell you, you got an 88 on the test, but you won't know what you missed on the test until I release the grade and send it to everybody. And I won't do that until everybody's taken the test because I just don't want those test answers and things like that floating around. So that's why uh, it's that way. And that's also why some of you guys haven't got your test back from last week. Um, What else are I going to say about that? Let me see what's uh, going on over here if we have any questions yet. Yeah, sometimes uh, the test, if you guys uh, study, I know it's open book and a lot of people think, oh, it's open book. I don't need to study. I don't need to look over the stuff. You still need to look over the stuff. I even stress that when we're in class and we do open note and open book stuff. Because, uh, especially when it is like a time test, you only have so long to look up the information. But if you've been studying and reviewing that information all week long, you should already know where the information's at and be like, oh, that's easy. I know that one, but I'm just going to go back and check really quick, and I know exactly where to do that. And so if you study, they're easy. If not, then it's still just difficult sometimes. But so, again, that's how grades are going to be uh, going and turning around. And yes, I decided to wear my 
a dinosaur shirt today. It's my Friday shirt. Now, uh, some of you guys also, uh, from last week, you will see your test already in that test. If you took it last week, should be in RenWeb. Uh, likewise, if you haven't taken the test or quiz today, those will be going in as missing for this progress report until I get those turned in. Same with the ones from last week uh, and all your assignments. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. So, again, some of you guys might still be feeling a little overwhelmed about the work, trying to get caught up, even if it's from week one. And so next week for all of my classes, Friday is going to be a makeup day. In other words, if you have all of your stuff done by Friday, you got Friday off for me. Uh, so again, Friday is going to be a makeup day next week, which means that you're only going to see four days worth of assignments in RenWeb next week. So we'll go ahead and talk about what's going to be going on next week uh, for the classes. So for anatomy, what we're going to be doing is a basic overview. We started the endocrine system this week, just going over what it does uh, and how it sends its messages around. And so we're going to be doing a little bit of a review on that. Well, that's probably going to be like one of your assignments next week. Uh, probably on Thursday, you'll have a little endocrine system review, what we've done so far. And then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll just be doing some more lecture and things like that. Uh, and those, again, will be up each day for those. For biology, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be uh, going over viruses and bacteria. So you guys just took your classification quiz. And so now we're actually getting into the structures and the, the living, actual living things. And generally, I don't spend a lot of time or we don't spend a lot of time on bacteria in class uh, just simply because we want to get to the other stuff. But with everything that's been going on and the reason we're out of school right now with the coronavirus, I thought it'd be a really important uh, topic to look at. And so next week, we're probably going to focus. We might do a little bit with bacteria, but we're really going to be focusing on viruses and uh, what viruses are. Are they a living thing? Uh, how do they cause so much destruction? Can they be a good thing? Things like that. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, next week for biology. And last but not least, for life science, what we're going to be doing next week is uh, if you watched the video yesterday, you kind of got a sneak peek. We're going to start talking about worms. We're going to be talking about our segmented worms, which are things like uh, earthworms, but they also include things like Christmas tree worms and other worms that live like in vent or like at the vents, thermal vents in the ocean or in the reefs. And so uh, we think of earthworms being the only worms, but they're not. And so we're going to be talking about worms next week. I will be doing a earthworm dissection video for you guys. And uh, you are also going to be doing a virtual worm dissection. And then we're probably going to be talking about mollusks. And so next week's going to be earthworms and mollusks because uh, mollusks actually get broken up into four different groups. You have, or yeah, I believe it's four. Let's see. You have your bivalves, which are your clams, your gastropoda, which I believe are your snails and slugs. And you have your uh, cephalopoda, which is uh, squids and octopi. They are actually uh, a mollusk. And I think the third one was like a, a I'm not sure, or the fourth one. And maybe it is just three. But anyway, we're going to be doing worms and mollusks ne uh, next week. And so uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, hello, Sam. So uh, let's see if there's any other questions so far. Uh, are we doing crabs next week? Um, I don't think so. Because uh, crabs belong to the phylum Arthropoda. This is seventh grade we're talking about. So crabs belong to the phylum Arthropoda, which is a, like the largest phylum of living things on Earth because it doesn't just include your crustaceans, but it includes your uh, insects, your arachnids. And so we'll probably spend an entire week just on Arthropoda alone. Because uh, remember, 
Invertebrates are 95% of uh, all living animals, which was a question on your quiz. Okay, oh, I don't know how to get on the test. Okay, so I sent you guys all an email. The email that I used to send it to was the email that you submitted when you did your test last week. So I'm talking to seventh grade and ninth grade right now. When you guys uh, did your test last week, and one of the questions on the test asked for an email for uh, seventh grade and ninth grade, those are the emails that I sent it to. I sent it to those same emails. And so uh, you might need to go in and look at that. And when you do, it's not going to come up as a message from me, all right? It's gonna come up as a message from Timeify, uh, that app I was telling you about, the add-on. And so it's gonna be from Timeify, and the subject is going to be test, and then whatever the quiz was. So for seventh grade, it would be test, um, invertebrates, part one quiz. For biology, it was test classification quiz. For anatomy, it was test um, uh, the census test. And so you have to look for that. You when you click on the message, it's going to give you like a little uh, a message that I wrote in there, just telling you about the test. If you log out of the test, you won't be able to get back on things like that. And uh, uh, other than that, it says open form. You just click that and you're right on the test. So it's like a few more steps than last week uh, for seventh grade. But um, this, again, just kind of helps with controlling tests and things like that. So that's why it's like that. It'll be easier once we get going on it. And today didn't help with the fact that the website crashed. Let's see. So, um, well, what just happened? Uh, both Sam's, I guess. Hello, both Sam's. I got no message. Again, uh, it sent it. I know it sent it. So you just have to make sure, go ahead, refresh it. And uh, if you still don't, after the live stream, I will go through a mind and I will send you a link to it. That's your personal link. Uh, this is Bonnie. So this is uh, our ball python that we have, or one of our ball pythons. We, you know, we also have uh, Cynthia, and I was going to get Cynthia out today, but she's actually in the middle of her shed, so I didn't want to bother her. So uh, just a second. Okay, just had to turn the lights back on. All right, so again, uh, if you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask whether it's about your work this week, whether it's about uh, the work next week, uh, test quizzes. Uh, thank you, Elena, for your question about the test. And uh, like, if you have any uh, questions about the worksheets or anything like that, like, oh, Mr. E, I couldn't find this question. Again, now's the time to do it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Barney. Yeah, Barney's still there. Uh, he's still chilling right behind me. Right. So what I want to ask you guys, I've been reading some of your responses, uh, but I just want to know again, how do you guys feel about this week being week three now that we've been doing this online learning? Does it feel like it's getting... Uh, well, I guess maybe not easier because, again, you still have the same type of work. But are you getting more into a rhythm of it, I guess I could say? 
how do you guys feel about it? So if you if you want, just let me know in the comments. You can do that. Uh, so horrible and hard. All right. So like, what's what's horrible or hard about it? Like, is it anything from my class? And if so, what? Because uh, again, our whole point, and this goes for all of your teachers, guys. We don't want this to be stressful for you. We still want you to learn, and we are still going to push you uh, to do your best, but we don't want you guys stressed out either. And so, again, yeah, is it going to be hard? Yeah, there are probably going to be things that are hard. Are you going to have a lot of work? Probably still. But the other thing you have to remember is it's still pretty much the same amount of work that we would have had in school. If you guys remember when we first started this, I told you guys it was going to be hard. And it's been extremely hard for me, to be honest, just keeping up with everything myself. And so I get that, uh, that it has been. Some things won't change, though, but mostly math. Uh, it's just, it, yeah, it is time consuming, but you also have to think, all right, if you're spending five to six hours on schoolwork, that's kind of where you would have been in school. But I also get that some of you guys don't have access to like a phone or something for five to six hours. And it can be straining on your eyes for five to six hours. And so that's why we try and we really are trying and they, they really want us to try and keep the workloads light. And that's why I've been trying to do it for you guys. Some of you guys push right through it and get it all done like two days worth one day. Uh, you don't ever have to, but you can. But again, that's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, see, I think that's that's a lot of our problems too. Uh, Leo saying, yeah. Uh-oh, you better plug it into the charger if you only got 2%. More videos from uh, who? Me or just all your classes in general? And again, if you guys are ever confused about something that you're reading, that's why when I have you guys take notes, I ask you to write down questions too, because those questions are there to help me see, okay, they need help understanding this. This is really what I should be covering when we do the review video. So uh, that's what we, or I would like to do. And uh, I'm trying to make the videos more interesting as we go on so they're not just you know straight lecture the whole time I'm trying to add little video clips and different things like that in there to change it up it sounds like it's raining outside but i think it's just the cars so uh so how's everybody's work coming uh, especially for my class do you feel like uh, there's too much to get done in one week. Do you feel like it's just enough to get done in one week? Uh, again, what are your opinions about that for any of my classes? And uh, uh, do I send my summary on the videos from yesterday to you on... Remington email or email. I think you meant Renweb. Uh, again, so if you guys weren't here at the beginning, uh, Bonnie's going through all the stuff here, so I got to pick her up. Uh, if you weren't here at the beginning of the video, I told you guys that um, it is raining. I told you guys at the beginning, Renweb is always my first priority when it comes to grades. So if you want it graded fast sub or faster, submit it to Renweb. Uh, up next is Remind, because uh, Remind, as uh, as much as it might be like texting, scrolling up to find your work sometimes, it's still easy in the sense that it's all there in an organized place. The most uh, confusing, convoluted junk drawer is email, and so that's like the worst way to send it to me. You can, but it's going to be the things that are great at last, all right? So Remind and RenWeb are your best bets. Yeah, I'm over here at the school, and so I think it just rained. But So I'm honestly trying to 
uh, think of any other questions that you guys might have. Uh, Bellwork. I'm still getting questions about Bellwork from time to time. The entire week, uh, week's Bellwork questions, like so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all those Bellwork questions will be on Monday's Bellwork paper. So when you go in the lesson plans and you look at the documents that you see there in Ren RenWeb, those Bellwork papers or that Bellwork paper there is for the entire week. That's not just for Monday. That's for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, yeah, the, all five days. And what I would prefer you do is it's great that you guys are doing it each and every day, but I would honestly prefer it again. This is for everybody. I would really prefer it if you just sent me uh, Monday through Friday on Friday. That way it's not five different pictures or five different uploads for one assignment. And so that makes it easier for me to grade. It's less work for you. It's less work for me. It's just a lot easier that way. Uh, the worksheet yesterday, I only got four squares. Are you going to give us the others? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking about the bell work? Another thing that I think uh, hap is happening is somehow I think biology's bellwork paper got on life science. And so if you have one that says uh, something about like uh, what's wrong with classification, that was uh, biology's bellwork paper. I do still have the shark cup, yes. Uh, just not here, it's at home. Um, let's see what else has been going on lately with that stuff. Um, so, uh, how's everybody's, uh, family's everybody doing all right? I hope so. We're praying for you guys, uh, because it's, it's stressful on all of us. And so we get that. And, uh, while you guys are thinking of questions, and while I'm thinking of uh, something else to bring to the conversation, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Bonnie up here and uh, maybe we'll bring somebody else for the live stream. All right, so nobody right now. So uh, that was awkward silence for a few seconds. Let's see. Uh, oh, we'll tell your sister happy birthday, Sam. If it is, I'm reading all the rest of them. Oh, well, tell her happy birthday in a couple days, technically. Ever heard of Donald Trump? <laughs> yes. Uh, and so, like, every day he has his corona updates. Um, so, uh, if you guys haven't heard the news, they have started their initiative to like reopen the country. And what that means is just simply, uh, you know, where we allow uh, certain states to start opening back up again because their coronavirus cases are starting to decrease, which means that we're on our way down out of the peak. However, Florida is not there yet. 
we are still not expected to hit our peak till May 3rd, which means like May 3rd, we will have the highest amount of Corona cases uh, that the state has seen to date. And it should hopefully be like, should not get any higher on May 3rd. And we should start seeing less and less cases each and every day. Uh, So, uh, uh, Gator Garrett, I'm still confused on what you meant by the four squares, uh, unless I answered it about the bellwork question. You want to be a scientist. What do you need to be one? Um, motivation. <laughs> uh, you have to stick to what you want and just go for it. Uh, also, a degree in some type of science. So my degree is in biology, so I went for that biology degree. But if you really want to do science like as a full-time job, probably just getting that one science degree isn't going to be enough. You want to go for your master's degree and then probably even your doctorate degree. And each time you go from like a bachelor's degree, which is the general college degree like I have, to a master's degree and then to a doctorate, you get more and more specific into the science that you want. And so you might have somebody like uh, my best, one of my best friends, he is, uh, he, he graduated as a biology major as well, but he did his master's degree as environmental science. So a little bit more specific. And if he were to go on for a doctorate, he could probably do it in something like herpetology, which is just typically studying reptiles or uh, ornithology, studying birds, ichthyology, studying fish or entomology, which is studying insects. And I say those four because those are the four that he would probably pick. Uh, probably one of those I might as well, if I ever did it. But let's see. Can we have a donkey as our class pet? Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, not that. Uh, no, not a real donkey. Uh, but Congratulations on the new baby donkey. Or a horse. Maybe a seahorse. Like in SpongeBob with mystery. You want to do cytology or cytology. I was about to say. Uh, I was thinking cryptology for a second because that was one of the answers on your test. Is an incorrect answer, but uh, cytology, yeah, that'd be a fun one. Uh, doing uh, cell science, uh, a lot of chemistry. Uh, I cannot say whether or not you can or cannot have a horse. That's up to your parents. <laughs> his name is Aggie. Is that the baby's name or like his name? And am I saying it right? Is it Aggie? Or is it pronounced like a Aggie? You want to be a professional Minecraft sky blocker. You know? Uh, let your dreams take you, Connor, wherever they may go. So, again, I don't think anybody really answered my question earlier. Uh, how's your work coming? Because like, that's, that's kind of the whole point of these live streams. Uh, mind you, I love just talking to you guys and getting to have these conversations back and forth. I miss getting to do it in class. And so this kind of gives us that, or at least for me, it kind of gives me that comfort of just that one little piece that we don't get that much anymore. But nonetheless, I still want to know about your schoolwork itself. So uh, how is it coming? Are you getting that work done? Is there anything that seems uh, tricky on it, whatnot? Uh, what do you think of the quiz today? Things like that. No, Connor, no. Um, no, we cannot keep a human as a class pet. 
Besides, y'all see how messy you make the classroom already. It's good. My homework is good. That's good. Oh, I know who you are, Connor. Let's see. So, uh, again, uh, next week will probably be very similar for you guys. Again, where I, like, I'll have your um, bell work. You'll have talking just to seventh grade right now because that's really all I see who's in the conversation. There might be more. I don't know. But seventh grade for next week, you guys will have we'll be going over like worms, uh, normal worms. Maybe I'll talk about how to make a worm bin because I'm actually going to be doing that for some of my animals. So maybe we'll do like a how to on that. Uh, but we'll be talking about worms and uh, mollusks. And on top of that, I might give you guys for one of the days instead of reading Again, just another documentary to watch where you guys have that option where I give you the menu, you know, just pick one of these and uh, just tell me what you thought about it. And that will probably be more so like a bell work question this time instead of just an actual assignment. Uh, how did you guys like that, by, by the way, this week? Did you like having that as like one of your assignments where you could pick a documentary and choose? Uh, because that's kind of like what I'm going for in my head is like each week or every other week, I don't know. Uh, one of the days out of that week is just, you know, pick one of these documentaries to watch. And then for the bell work the next, the following day, just tell me what you thought about it. So I'm thinking about doing that again. I know, like I said, there was a really cool one on dragonflies I watched recently. And I know I'm going to put that one up, uh, not next week, but probably the week after when we do our insects and stuff. Insects are so cool. It's a shame they only get like a small portion in our textbook because, like you guys saw, if you watched our life science video the other day, in that graph, they literally take up like almost three thirds, or well, three thirds, uh, like two thirds of the graph. It's uh, huge how many insects there are. And we just talk about it for like a page and a half in our book. Okay, Sebastian, uh, for Timeify, you don't go on to Timeify. So again, I'll say this again for everybody in the uh, chat or just watching the video. Timeify is for me, all right? It's something that I access, that I put the Google form into, and then it processes all this stuff to put in the time, to put in uh, your emails and things like that. And then I send you the Google form through Timeify. So long story short, you don't do anything with Timeify. When I mentioned that this morning, what I was trying to say was just simply that the website Timeify, which was running the Google form, was down and that's why you couldn't access it. But to access your test or your quiz, you go to your email and that's gonna be the email that either you sent me in Remind or you uploaded on the Google form last week and check your emails. You're gonna see an email from Timeify. You open it up and it's gonna give you some information about the quiz and then it says open form. You click that and you're there at the quiz. So again, there's like a few more steps than last week, but it's going to be better in the long run for me, being able to actually judge the assessment. <laughs> yeah, I think the jellyfish one was the coolest. It was the longest one, but it was probably the, I guess, the least boring one, you could say. And I hate saying that because I like documentaries, but... Students have been asking me since I have, ever since I started teaching to play Fortnite, and I still haven't. Uh, yes, you can hear the crickets because uh, they're in some of the cages back here, and I got some more because I was going to do my feeding frenzy Friday with you guys, but again, for whatever reason, you need a thousand subscribers to do YouTube live on a phone. So fix that YouTube. Can we learn about the human parts like the brain and legs? Uh, possibly we might get to it. 
uh, in all honesty, we're probably not going to learn much about human anatomy this year, uh, but we may do some comparative anatomy. What I mean by comparative anatomy is we'll be looking at like a frog and comparing the frog's organs to our organs. So for example, a frog has a three-chambered heart and we'll be looking at that. We'll probably be doing a dissection online and I will show you guys that. And uh, where the frog has a three-chambered heart, we have a four-chambered heart. So they have two, uh, I wanna say they're the atriums in one ventricle and we have two ventricles and two atriums. I think that's how it goes. Uh, don't quote me on that though. That was the best one. Oh yeah, the jellyfish one. I think that's what you're talking about. Oh yeah, uh, the, the box jellyfish episode. I see Leo. Did he use his book? on the open book test. You asked 50 times, 57, I just saw once. Let's see. We pay people to subscribe. So uh, we have like 15-ish minutes left of our live stream today. If you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll try and get that. So again, make sure that we're not just spamming the, the live chat, all right? Uh, and uh, uh, thank you, Garrett. Yes. It's my Friday dino shirt. Let's see. So, um, let's talk about earthworms because you guys are going to be learning about earthworms next week. Uh, here's something for you. There are earthworms that are actually 10 feet long and they don't live in the ocean. They live like on ground they can grow up to 10 feet long and they can be like this big around. They live in Australia though, but they're like super huge. And we're gonna look at those when we do the review next week. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd agree with you. Uh, so again, we might actually end a little early today because I really don't have much to tell you guys today. I've pretty much given you all my updates. And uh, unless you guys have questions, uh, we might just go ahead and end this now. So I'm uh, going to give it probably like five more minutes on here. Because uh, just in case there's any like stragglers that might have anything. I have a question. Why are potatoes brown? Or why is milk white? Uh because potatoes are brown because of the plastids inside them, most likely. Milk is white, most likely, because it's absorbing all the other colors around it, because that's how light works. Because of the chemicals it's made out of. How do they grow that big? What? Oh, the, the worms. They're, just, they're a different species of earthworm. Uh, uh, our earthworms, and that's the other thing. So like you can go to the bait shop before and maybe you've seen where you can get night crawlers or red wigglers or uh, I think there's a third one. I can't remember it though. But each one of those is actually a different species of earthworm. Uh, and so there are different species, not just one worm that we call an earthworm. There are different species. And again, with biology, that's where classification comes in. In seventh grade, we talked about biology too. Uh, welcome back. But we're actually just about to end.
Can you try? Okay, so cutting worms in half. I did talk about this in the video, uh, but like if you cut an earthworm in half, you're not going to make two worms. You're just going to have one dead worm because uh, earthworms can't reproduce that way. We are going to see how earthworms are actually hermaphroditic, like the planarians, which means that they have both reproductive organs. And again, the reason they're designed this way is because... Uh, when you're a small organism that has a big job to do, there needs to be a lot of you. And uh, being that small also means that you might uh, be killed more often than not. And so they have to reproduce on a much higher scale. And so that allows them to, when both part, when both of the uh, planarians can uh, have fertilized eggs at the same time, that's literally doubling the population that you would have had. So that's why some organisms like that are able to uh, do that. Uh, snails do it as well. Have you milked a goat? <laughs> uh, no, but I have actually milked a cow before. Uh, one time when I was working summer camp and we went to... Uh, green green something farms here in florida and they had like the dairy cow you could milk and i tried that and it was weird night crawlers night crawler is just a term like when you go to the bait shop and uh you're asking for like worms for fishing you can get red wigglers which are little tiny worms or you can get night crawlers which are like the big earthworms like that when we do worm dissections like when you guys did it last year uh you were using night crawlers to dissect those are the big earthworms. I don't remember the scientific name. That's our common name. And again, that's another problem with common names. Yeah, sorry. Unless you got any questions, Alex, because right now it's just kind of this awkward me sitting here staring at the screen. Uh, I mean, I love talking to you guys, but if you don't have anything to ask, then we're, we'll probably just end it soon. Don't earthworms have five hearts? Uh, I believe it's technically eight. And it's not like a heart that you or I have, or even a frog has. So I told you we'd be talking about comparative anatomy. Uh, the term heart for a worm is thrown around very lightly, just like saying a planarian has a brain. All right, if you did your reading or you remember from the video when we talked about planarians and how they have a simple brain, that simple brain is just like, a ganglion. It's just like a couple cells that are there together, clumped there. And uh, these ganglion, they're not a true brain, but they work kind of like it. Likewise with our earthworms, they have about eight hearts or what are called a heart. And really what it is, they're just eight different pumps. And so they're pumping the blood through the worm. Yes, starfish do... Uh, well, I'd honestly have to get back to you on that one about the starfish because the thing is, yes, they can regenerate limbs, but how they regenerate those limbs uh, or the fact that, so like some of you guys might have heard stories or different things before where uh, people would like cut up all the arms of these starfish to try and kill them and then they'd make like 10 more starfish because of it. Uh, not sure the actual validity to that one because in most cases they probably need the main body structure to reproduce their uh what would be considered their appendages but planarians yeah you could cut a planarian right in half and it will turn into two new ones um and that brings up another good point that's uh i forgot about next week so for seventh grade next we'll be talking about worms we'll be talking about the mollusks and the other phylum we'll be talking about is Echinodermata, which is the fancy way of saying the echinoderms, which are starfish, sea urchins, um, sand dollars, uh, crinoids, which you, we, we have a few of them today, but there are a lot more in the fossil record than anything else. And uh, actually just the last 
fossil club meeting I was at for the Tampa Fossil Club, that's what we talked about was the history of echinoderms. And the lady who was there was a specialist in them and talked about how there were so many weird ones back then. And this was an evolutionist talking. And what she was talking about was kind of interesting. The fact that she said they are so weird and unique that when they try and put them in their evolutionary tree, they were like, literally hundreds of thousands of different possible ways they could be related to each other because they're so weird. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, but you step back and then you kind of think like we do, hmm, maybe they were just all created to be these unique creatures. So echinoderms, we'll be talking about that next week too. Let's see. Hello, Yankees production. Uh, how big is shark poo? I have no idea. And it probably de depends on the species of shark, you know. But one thing I can tell you is uh, um, their uh, liquid waste is very minimum because living in salt water, that's another thing that you can find out a lot about. And that's also another reason why when you have a fish tank, you have to change the water so much because fish are always drinking and they're always peeing in fresh water because they have to keep that osmosis going. In salt water, because the water is saltier outside their bodies than inside their bodies, they have to try and conserve as much water inside of them as they can. And so they rarely pee in the ocean. So there you go. They pee in fresh water, but rarely in the ocean. Everybody else does it there. You should have, I have a quarter, can I get a golden ball? Uh, sure. Just, just send me your PO box and it'll be coming in the mail four to six weeks. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't have to wait till class is over just till the epidemic's over or the pandemic. <laughs> you had to discreet is a uh, fecal matter. That's your scientific term for it. It's fecal waste. Uh, do fish get thirsty uh, in the ocean? They probably do. Yeah. Shark eggs are really weird looking, uh, which reminds me. June, the end of June is Shark Con 7 in Tampa. It's a really cool event. I went to it last summer. And uh, just like the name implies, it's all about sharks. And so you have people from like Discovery Shark Week that come out. Uh, a lot of the scientists that do the shows, they come out and they have panels and different things like that. SeaWorld is there. Uh, the Florida Aquarium's there. The Clearwater Aquarium's there. And it's just a bunch of shark conservation people talking about what they love and shark week and it's awesome and that's happening at the end of june this year in tampa so uh what made me think of that is when you talk about the shark egg because uh sea world brought some shark eggs and they would shine the light on it so you could see the, the the baby shark moving around inside Well, thank you, Mineta wrote you a letter. <laughs> You're cool, too. Do sharks like Shark Tank? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, so the largest shark tank in the world, though, uh, would or one of the largest, the largest one in the United States, I got to go to two summers ago when I went to up to the Smoky Mountains. I did like my own little uh, vacation. And as I was going through Georgia, 
I decided to stop in Atlanta at the Atlantic Aquarium there, or the Atlanta Aquarium there. And uh, they have the largest like aquarium gallon size in the United States. And it's so large that they can actually keep two uh, um, whale sharks in the aquarium along with manta rays. And that was just super cool to be able to see uh, in person, especially like when you're in the dome and you can see them like going over you. That was really cool. Who's going to Comic-Con? Going to Shark Con, I can tell you that. And you'll see me dressed up in my uh, shark outfit. Do humans like human tank? Uh, quarantine says no. It's Corona time. How was your Easter? My Easter was good. I baked a ham. Uh, last year, I really started doing more uh, cooking and stuff. And so this year... I did another ham and I made my own glaze to put on it and it turned out really good. So yeah, we had a good Easter. I hope you guys did. I, I actually did rest it some and uh, that was nice because uh, school has been crazy. 1820. Yeah, so it is kind of weird. We see this every hundred years or so, the uh, outbreaks of different viruses. And uh, that just kind of uh, goes to show, you know, we were expecting it in some cases. Uh, you've had some scientists, some virologists that have been saying that, you know, it, it's overdue because we haven't had one in such a long time. And also you have other people, like there was a, a TED Talk. Now, mind you, it was about a month ago now it was released, but it was a TED Talk. This lady from the CDC was explaining how, you know, it shouldn't be surprising that we're finding new viruses when our population is growing and encroaching into areas that were once wild and never nobody had ever been to before. And we're gonna run into things that we have our bodies haven't been experienced to before. Very similar to uh, when the Native Americans were exposed to smallpox by the European settlers, and that didn't turn out well. It's from... Uh, I, I think I missed something from, I don't know what's from Sonic X. Blue Ridge, Georgia. Oh, the, yeah, I love it up there. That's like around Helen, Georgia, that area. Uh, like three years ago, my, uh, no, was it two years ago? Not too long ago. I think it was like two years ago. Uh, my best friends and I, we all rented a cabin up in uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains in Georgia for like a week and that was awesome what's the biggest snake i've ever seen i mean you know i can't remember it off the top of my head i guess i could just say you know an anaconda at the zoo or something like that but i don't specifically remember it uh like at the repticons probably something that's called a blood python uh or like a i think it's a blood python or blood boat it's a blood python and they get really big Do you consider eyebrows facial hair? Um, I mean, I guess it's hair that's on your face and it does serve a purpose. The reason for, again, when your forehead's sweating, it, it's like a natural sweatband. That's what they're there for. Yeah, poor little peeps. Wasn't good, wasn't a good Easter for them. When am I going to end the stream? Yeah, yeah, you guys were able to prolong it, that's for sure. So uh, uh, good on you for that. Uh, probably in just a few minutes. I'll probably pray us out like I did the other day, and then we'll be done. <laughs> what hair color do they put on bald people's license? Why do we call it a driveway when we park in it? And why do we call the parkway the parkway when we drive on it? Hmm? Why is it called a building if it's not being built? What's my favorite video game? Halo. Uh, like, I have been a Halo fan for probably 
close to 20 years. That seems weird. No, not 20 years. 15. 15. Yeah. Uh, but still, Halo is my favorite. Uh, I also really like Fallout. I got into Fallout last summer, and that's pretty much all I've been playing lately when I get to. So, I don't think you guys can hear it right now, but our Vietnamese mossy frogs are actually calling, or at least one of them was. If you were shorter than someone, would it be possible to talk down to them? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of emojis all of a sudden. I see, so I'm gonna end this in just a second. I'm trying to get caught up and see if there's any serious questions here. Get Nintendo Switch. I'm not gonna lie, I really do want one. Uh, I hope we can still do our end of the year game day, cause like, uh, that's like one of the best days in my opinion. I love doing that with you guys. Let's see. Is cereal soup. Uh, that's not good. Do you still talk with Mr. Lemper? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, right now we're working on a uh, uh, a secret project with, it's not really secret, but we're working on a little video to help uh, Pastor John out. So yeah, we, we still talk all the time. Uh, yeah, Mr. Lemper's awesome. Are my questions annoying? No, they're fun. That's what I love you guys for. So uh, before we close out, I am going to try and see if I can move with you guys and show you our moxy tree frogs. And maybe you can hear them calling again. So I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, they're not going to call now. And now they're all hiding. You can see one of our barking tree frogs, though. See him up there? It's one of our Florida natives. And they're not calling anymore. So, And there's Coco. So, hiding. So, all right. Well, we'll probably end it here. Let's see. So you guys want a video of just like the lizards smacking the crickets. I don't know. Uh, let's see. What's the best Wi-Fi name you've seen? There was one, I think it was like Exodus 20 something. I forget the, the verse, but like when you look up the verse, the verse was thou shalt not steal. In other words, like stealing somebody's Wi-Fi. All right, uh, so we are going to end here. Before we do, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. And so, again, I hope you guys have a great weekend. If you have any other actual questions, uh, like about schoolwork or grades or anything like that, go ahead and message me and remind. And, uh, yeah, we've already gone over, so let's go ahead and pray. So, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the ability to be able to talk and communicate and just have some fun with these students, Lord. I pray, Father, that you help them through this time, Lord, as we're going through this and uh, just dealing with all these things that are going on. Lord, we just pray that you be with us, be with our nation, Father. Keep us safe. Help calm us, Lord. Don't let us be stressed out or overwhelmed, but just let us be able to get everything done that we need to. Let us have a restful and relaxful weekend, and let us continue strong next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So, uh, looks like we have two more questions. If you were a genie and a person asked you this wish, I wish you would not grant me this wish. That sounds like something that would make a robot explode. Why does your nose run and your feet smell? Yeah. 
All right, so this is it. I am ending the live stream. So I will talk to y'all later. Have a great weekend and uh, bye.